G'day mates and welcome back to Power and Revolution. Uh, Poland came into space this time, but uh, we've uh, we've come back to a bit of a, a shit show, a shit storm at the end of that last episode. We've uh, effectively, let's see if I can find where that stuff is again. We've effectively neutered the powers of parliament. Um, it hasn't happened just yet, but it will take place in uh, just over one week. <laughs> and basically what that's going to do is... Uh, Causing a rift in Parliament. Yeah, people are not happy about this. Our our left Socialist Labour League and a couple of the other sort of semi-right-wing parties are 50-50 on it. Our party, of course, likes it because I'm in control and they would uh, probably not like it if I wasn't in control. But uh, what they are trying to do, or what we're trying to do, is uh, turn Parliament into effectively a... Uh, slowly turn it into like a puppet parliament so that I'm effectively a dictator. Not quite happening yet, but we are working our way towards it. Uh, basically stopping them from voting a motion of no confidence. Now, it's going to be a little bit of a, a bit of a, a struggle here. We may well get kicked out. We need to be very, very careful. Um, it's the Homeland Security. Things are not looking good. Tyranny, tyranny. Um, what we need to do is try to get people back on our side. Our uh, popularity is plummeting if we can't get this under control then we could have some major major issues i wonder if we can it's not a huge police number is it i think security of head of state is going to be vital it's 300 million though let's just bump it up slightly 72 million on that um it's not a riot squad or anything like that no, I thought there might have been a riot squad or something, but uh, there's nothing like that. So we just need to hope our police are up to the task. Now, they've got it all under control, but there's no doubt that it's going to pop up again in the near future. We need to keep public opinion on our side. Now, part of that is going to be uh, getting the deficit under control. It's currently pretty significant. In fact, we've increased spending quite substantially. Uh, our total takings um, in terms of tax dollars have increased. But our GDP has, or our takings have not increased in line with our expenditure. Let's have a quick look in here. Yeah, total spending has gone up by almost $10 billion. What do we got here? More riots. That's, yeah. I mean, this spamming shit, I just need to, the creators of the game need to get rid of it. It's, it's the same message effectively 10 different times. Uh, Country's on fire. Things are not looking good. What have you got to say with yourself? Uh, want to join NATO? Sure, there's more people in NATO is good. Agriculture I do like. Let's up it slightly to 39% is my suggestion. Whether the EU goes with it or not, I don't know. But we're going to see how we go here. Now, this is not too bad. This is only a single riot. Uh, I'm going to bring in police reinforcements, but otherwise let them... Let them do it. Now, it's probably a, pop a popular uprising, so we do need to be careful of bleeding this over time. Wow, okay. Well, the EU's keen to... keen to subsidise agriculture. That's interesting. Perhaps a little bit too much. Too much of the budget is being spent on it, because agriculture is inherently a low GDP uh, proposition, or low GDP good. Now, it's not mandating that we need to have that much. It's what the actual EU, as an organisation, is spending on boosting agriculture. Uh, even so, I don't think it's necessarily the best way of moving Europe forward. Let's have a quick look at our GDP spread here. Just touch up on it while we're allowing all these things in the background to go on. Our total agricultural GDP is $29 billion dues, which are an increase from when we started the game. Uh, but as a percentage of our GDP, it's actually decreasing. So it's, there is growth in the sector, but there is more growth in other sectors. Uh, total population is actually, uh, like active population there is decreasing, which is good. It means we're beginning to industrialize or hopefully move into a service industry. Unpopular uprising, now that is very good. That's what we want. It means they'll shut themselves down in time, uh, but it also means that we should start gaining a small boost over time. Organic agriculture is decreasing. Now, I'm not sure exactly what bearings has on the game, possibly to do with uh, decreased toxicity to the environment. We can influence that by allow helping people convert to organic farming, but I don't think we're going to do that just yet. I really need to be careful of my spending. 
Okay. It's passed, and now we're going to have a massive uprising again, I think. Uh, okay, the Hyperloop train. Have we discovered that as well, perhaps? No, we've got uh, Arfid uh, chips, which are, I think, the things you implant into your skin to do stuff. Hyperloop is interesting. It's a new thing you can actually build under transportation. It unlocks a uh, an additional... So you've got high-speed train at the moment. We can actually build Hyperloop at a later date once we discover it. Now, the Chinese are not sharing. They're not playing nice. But, ooh, okay. Now, I'm not really sure what the benefits of of releasing it. Patent and commercially accessible. We're not going to. We're going to hoard it and see if it boosts our, uh, our industry a little bit. Yes, it's not my first build, but I suppose because I'm using a new character, they think it's a new a new build. Okay, now let's have a quick look at the laws of parliament, powers of parliament. Currently, they can still vote for laws, but there's no motions of no confidence, so they cannot vote us out in terms of a no confidence vote. Uh, all of the people, of course, can still vote us out. So, the rioters have yeah, this is a bit of a, like a Hong Kong riot at the moment. We need to be very, very careful of what we're doing. Uh, we don't want it to spiral out of control, and we don't want to send in the army. They're very weak, though, and they've just shut down by themselves. I did not intervene with the military. That's wrong. The clashes have but they've... They've the pulled... Defense does not have enough men. Come on, mate. I've been upping... I've been upping stuff in the army my entire time in power. We're still not... We're still increasing in amounts as well, which will allow us to fulfill our electoral promise. Commandos going up. Commandos are very interesting. So what you can do with commandos... Let's go back into sort of tutorial mode here for a second. Commandos are interesting in that if I can take the inside the capital, I can't actually see inside the capital, can I see inside my town? Uh, I cannot see inside the town unless we have demonstrators or something going on. What it allows me to do is, well, what's, each town is made up of different areas, the, the, the main square and so on and so forth, uh, different residences, the bank, the police office, and so on and so forth. And what the capital has is the head of state's armored residence with a bunker inside. And if you can breach that bunker, you can capture and potentially execute the head of state. It allows you to effectively uh, shut down the entire country. They all uh, give in because the head of state is held hostage. So what commandos can do is rather than have our army slog our way through and fight them sort of on a you know World War One style or even World War II style blitzkrieg and break through, gradually forcing them back we can actually go commandos we can drop them right in on top of the head of state's residence and if we've got enough to hold off whatever their defenses in this area are which we do not know if i had a spy satellite i could probably tell we would be able to effectively uh take them out in one fell swoop works great for smaller countries with uh, more dispersed militaries uh and for really huge widespread countries like potentially the ukraine uh, Turkey, I think, is too highly militarized, but uh, France, for example, might have a lot of their military along the edges or in various bases or overseas. Um, but we could drop into Paris and take them out immediately. Hmm, as my Nigeria game, I had uh, Poland, of, of all countries, actually declared war on me because I was taking, I think it was a war with Niger, of all places, and uh, a bunch of other countries jumped in for some reason, so I sent my crack troops all the way out, flying by super ultra long range chopper took a long long time all the way up into warsaw and effectively uh took over poland i did release them afterwards but i, I knocked them out of the war quite quite simply with uh, some crack nigerian troops so it's something to keep in mind we do need to consider yes now what is that loan it's a larger loan than what we've been taking before but our takings what's our growth at the moment Growth is flatlined. 3% is not shabby, but I would like it to be considerably higher. Uh, we do need to be careful of inflation is coming back under control, which is good. Now I could start dropping the interest rate again, which would boost our growth, but inflation is still relatively high. I'd like to keep it down. Now somebody, one of the commenters suggested that I write down everything we have a surplus of. I have not done that. I forgot to do it before the the start, but something I will consider doing. The other option, of course, is to start growing sectors of the economy that are high value. That's not very high value. Do I want to industrialize? I think I really want to start moving on towards 
service-based industry. GDP is growing here and the number of people, so we are, it's a larger percentage of our GDP. So we are taking from agriculture. A uh, number of employment's gone right up. So you can see it hasn't been as effective a growth in terms of the number of people employed versus the total GDP growth. Industry is still very, very lucrative, especially things like steel and whatnot. Let's have a look at steel. Uh, we have this trade imbalance. It's good profit. Our, our steel industry is making pretty good. It's 2% of our total income takings. In terms of service sector, that has grown slightly, but as a percentage of GDP, it's dropping. And our percentage of people working in there are also decreasing. But we are exporting more of our services overseas, things like education. So people come into the country to study. That makes it an export industry because money is coming into the country as opposed to going out of the country. Things like tourism is also an export industry, even though you're not exporting anything in the classical sense. Uh, energy wise, I think this is where a lot of our GDP has gone. How do I tell GDP? It doesn't say. Let's have a look here. I oh, should tell me here. Uh, total activities of the energy sector. Sales are up, profits are up considerably. That's a good. So we're becoming more profitable over time as reflected in our productivity in index. 30% uh, of our total income tax. Uh, I think they mean tax takings. Again, it's, it's written by, this game is designed by people who do not speak English as a native language. The household purses. So there's a few odd bits and pieces here, but I think that means our total tax takings uh, have increased. Employment is down which makes it a hell of a lot more efficient. Uh, I'm not sure what this means exactly. Maybe we've dropped unemployment. These don't seem to line up correctly. Let's have a look now. I think it was in gas we did. Natural gas has... Yeah, consumption is increasing, but we're now providing a lot of it here. Uh, for some reason, our trade balance is still very high. But sales are up and profits are way up, which is good. So I don't think we're not going to worry about that too much. I'd like to import some more from Russia. That might be something we can consider if we can get a very cheap price for it. But I'd like to look at our fuel as well. Fuel's in vital. Okay, then a couple of seconds of tick pass while I just got rid of that phone. Hopefully I'll remember to edit that out. Now, fuel doesn't say what it's used in, but it is still useful in the economy. Now, it comes from oil, comes from natural gas, comes from colza, which is a uh, like a grain crop or something that you use to make biofuel. It also comes from the capture and recycling of CO2. We need to consider that if we have the technology. I'll look at that shortly. Um, but that'll, that will allow us to effectively, other than going through two resources we don't really have, we've got a tiny bit of natural gas, but uh, nothing spectacular. Colza is, well, I mean, you can grow grain crops for fuel. It's not it's not efficient in any, any real stretch of the imagination, but when these two run out, Colza will be an excellent source of it. And this game has sort of future tech in that you can capture and convert CO2 into uh, carbon-based fuels. So something we should look at because it may be a way to make us a little bit more independent with regards to fuel. Our network, network Russian network, growth, growth is acceptable. Unemployment is stable at 4%, which is good. And uh, Belarus is still trying to produce nuclear missiles. Let's see if we can... Uh, what if we can release this in the... Where do we go here? Exterior. Make scandal. No, no scandals. Okay, that's not a scandal necessarily. What we can do though is go to the UN and... Where's the UN? And ask them again. Now, last time we did this, they said that we didn't have enough evidence, but the fact that we have two bits of evidence, uh, I will provide proof that... BB Belarus. Belarus, I've got to learn to spell. There we go, Belarus. Confirm. Yeah, what do they have they got to say? Nothing yet. We'll find out shortly. Interesting evidence, but again, insufficient. Give it a try. Okay, so we could could give it a try and uh, ask for a military intervention. I wonder if we can do that. Let's give it a go. Not particularly keen to invade just yet. But uh, we'll give it a go. Let's see what we've got here. We've got fighters, helicopters, and so on and so forth. I think I might bring and redeploy these ones up here just in case we need them shortly. Uh, drones are good for spying and whatnot. Fighters. 
characters. Let's allocate those up here as well. Now what I want to do is, let's go to, we're already in military, we're gonna go into here and let's find, it's hard to read, but I think, I think that's commandos. 730 knots, have a double check here. Yes, that is commandos. Okay, so all our commandos in the entire area are going to be allocated. Let's put them in Bialy stock. Did that work? Yes, it's worked. Okay, so they're all being allocated now to Bialy stock. Excellent. Probably should have put them in this air base instead, but uh, it's a little bit close to the front line, but that'll do for now. So all our commandos now are going over to there. So we've got them in one location to do a smash and grab if we have to. Now what I'd like to do is go to the UN and see if we can get them to authorize military intervention against Belarus, because after all, they're buying nukes secretly. We need to uh, preserve that. We need to preserve world peace. Let's see if we can get them under control here. Is it gonna work? It's a highly unlikely to work. We don't have concrete evidence that they're funding terrorists or any kind of major thing like that, but if we can get a little bit in position, it's not very many soldiers. I'm sure I had more soldiers. I'm gonna bring, actually I'm gonna leave the ones in Warsaw there. It's not very many. We do not have many soldiers at all, do we? Let's have a quick look at Belarus in terms of comparison. I'll read that later. They have slightly more military than us. Let's have a look at their... Where is it? Our oh, army. They have more men in the army. No, we have more men in the army. Um, they've got eight nukes, so that is a small concern. They could nuke us if they do, though. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens, but they've got definitely got eight nukes that we're aware of, that our intelligence service is aware of. So Belarus is a major, major threat to world security at the moment here. They also don't like us. We need to bring them under control. Unfortunately, people are not very happy. Let's see if we can... What can we do for women? Hmm... Not a particularly right-wing thing to do, but this is just budget and funding, so we could... I mean, sexual violence, regardless of women or men, is a bad thing. Uh, I wonder if we could bump up the fund... Oh, it's cheap. 83 million. Let's see if that actually gets anybody on our side or not. Uh, education policy... I'm not going to spend state funds to educate that. It's not my job to be a social engineer here. If uh, people want to do what people want to do, they can do that. Uh, maybe if we have more money later on, we'll be fine. But for now, well, it's everybody's rights. But yes, women's rights is good. What I'm actually going to get you to do is meet up with me. And uh, I'll get you to talk about all my good points to the voting public. Let's have a look what we've got in here. Happiness declines. That's fine. The British demonstrators. Again, I don't really care about that. Now, this one here is interesting. Minister for Justice is unhappy, I suspect, or causing problems in some way. So let's have a quick look here. The Minister for Justice is this person here. Now, they're very happy. Hmm. Let's meet up with them anyway and just see what's going on. Tell them to toe the line, perhaps. Now, they could be leaking or they could be doing something. I'm not sure exactly what's wrong. It could as well be that this person does not, the Minister for Youth may well not like her. It's a 70 year old man, he probably doesn't like that person, so we'll get them, we'll meet them both and tell them both to toe the line and see how that goes. Let's have a quick national holiday, excellent. Let's have a quick look at our cabinet here. They're not particularly popular people. I think their popularity helps us with regards to, let's pause that. We've got that meeting going. Their popularity is uh, important with regards to swaying the parliament to vote for them. If you want to, say, for example, increase health spending or change health law uh, and you need to have a vote on it, having a very, very popular minister there allows us to get things done a little bit easier, I believe. Although, again, there's no real documentation explaining all this stuff. Uh, okay, the women's right presidents. No, no, we don't want coffee. Would you like... You think it's reasonable? 
Okay, she's not very happy. She's You're charming though. <laughs> Let's be a little bit sexist to the uh, to the women's rights president. Uh, Milton's can be proud of the leader. How old is she? Forty-two. Excellent. I wonder if I can probably not bribe her. Let's see if I can award her the national medal. No, she doesn't like it very much. She probably she's got it, but she doesn't really care for it much. I'd like you to speak highly of me in public, and that's all we need for now. Excellent. So that will hopefully bump us up. We're currently at 42. Oh. Okay, it's gone up slightly. We've got another meeting over here with the Minister for Justice. Sure. So this person was saying that she is causing problems. Oh. Let's get her a little bit drunk. Tell her she's charming. Uh, I'd like to cheer her up. Thanks. I'm feeling a little low at the moment. Uh, we're not going to tell her to toe the line just yet. She seems to like us. She seems to be working pretty well. Actually, let's tell her to toe the line. No, that didn't work well. I should have trusted my gut. She still likes us, though. Um, but we'll see if that holds up on it now. Hermione Wilson. This is meant to be Hermione uh, Granger, which is... What's that chick's name in real life? Um, I can't think, but it's meant to be that, uh, that young actress who's uh, a women's rights advocate around the world she's British and this is her she's a sort of a fake person in the game but we can meet her hopefully bring her in and see if she can say nice things about us in the international public because there is a small concern that uh, the world is not looking favorably on us at the moment while we are currently uh, centralizing our power uh, I'd like you now you're complaining about that other person I'm gonna give you some champagne get you drunk excellent tell you you're very radiant and I'd like to cheer him up a little bit as well, but I also want him to toe the line. Well, very well. At your service. Good. So he hasn't been very happy and he has been complaining about our people. His job is not to complain, it's to work for the youth of this country. Okay, time's ticking on. What are we gonna do now? That's the important part. I need to boost a lot of this is gonna be a waiting game, so you can tell I'm sort of using a bit of patter or I'm going back and forth filling in time while things tick over. The important part here though is that we need to grow the economy uh, while keeping our popularity up and not spending too much. Uh, yeah, we're overproducing energy, which is good. We need more people. It's coming up every week, it seems like, which is massive overkill. Now this Hermione Granger lady, um, almost got a proper texture here. It's interesting, this bug is, again, I've never seen any other games, but it is somewhat distracting. Sure. Let's see if we get you drunk. That's not to be turned down. <laughs> okay, well she got drunk. She's charming yes, I know. and inspiration to the world. Kind. We seem to have okay, well that's done. I don't. I thought she might have uh, said something nice about us, but uh, apparently not. Either way, Europe still likes us quite a bit. Serbs hate us, and uh, some of the people down here don't particularly like us, but that's fine. When is? Hmm. Trying to make nuclear missiles, that's fine. Now what I want to know is when is pending resolution? No. Are we having a meeting? I'm sure I asked them for a military organization against Belarus. Let's try that again. Oh, the next session. Okay, that's coming up in time. Hmm. I'm sure that didn't pop up earlier. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, either way, what we need to do now is let's have a quick look at our service sector. Attraction parks are potentially lucrative. They require electricity, fast food, and electric materials. Do we have electricity? We have a little bit of a surplus. I'm not sure. Uh, meeting request, yes, from somebody. Igor, is it? It's not Belarus, it's some, some country, it might be Lithuania or something like that. I don't know exactly all the flags in this part of the world. Uh, the, what was I looking at? Electricity is currently a small surplus. So we need to be careful not to up electricity producing industries too much, unless we're going to uh, fund the electricity quite a lot. So we could consider building, there are currently no attraction parks uh, in this country. What's going on here? too much shit going on. 
Wow, okay, that's kind of cool. China is leading the way in research. We are a bit behind at the moment. Hmm, this is useful. Okay, so Belarus is funding terrorists in Russia and Ukraine. This is very, very interesting. Let's go here. First of all, what we're going to do is provide proof to the UN that Belarus is a major threat. Nothing happened. Let's try that again twice. I think I might be overdoing this. There's a bit of a lag there. Uh, evidence sufficient for sanctions. Okay, the things are looking very good now. We're asking them, and that'll be coming up shortly. Sanctions. So ideally they will give us military rights. What's that? It's a Russian base. So we need to be very careful not to hit that Russian base. Uh, otherwise Russia itself will become mightily displeased with us. While we're here actually, let's get a meeting request with Russia and see if we can buy some natural gas. Vasily Sputin or something. I wonder who that could... Ooh. Okay, he doesn't like us very much. What we're going to do though, we don't like Poland very much, even though we've been the best of friends for many, many years. <laughs> um, uh, what was I trying to do? Economy, new contract, that's what I want. I want to see if I can buy, purchase natural gas. Now, Russia has shit tons of natural gas. And yes, yeah, so we can get a deal here. We can get a deal. I don't need 18 million. I think they're going to continue negotiating for 18 uh, million tow, which is not good. We need, we've already got a fair bit under contract with Canada. We're we buying it from Canada. In that case, I'm not going to bother. We've got more than sufficient. Uh, resolution was rejected. Fewer than nine votes in favor. Bugger. So no one vetoed it. No one voted against it. But most of them abstained. So we can't get military intervention against Belarus. What can we get against Belarus? Can we get... It's the composition at the moment. Seems to be nothing we can do here just yet. Can we apply sanctions to them? Assign Agent 001 to Belarus and see if he comes up with anything. Meeting with a Bulgaria, of course, that's a Bulgarian flag. Now, what do you want to do? You want to buy natural gas from us. What? So, obviously, not selling any yet. Uh, you want to buy it for considerably higher than what we're selling it for. Mm -hmm. I'll sell it for 500 because you know, people need this more than you do. Uh, 500, let's try 495. Let's try 493. Let's try 489. It's getting up there, it's getting up there. Mm. This is more than they normally buy it for. But they obviously need the gas. Uh, it's a hell of a lot more than we normally sell it for, which will boost our natural gas industry. Even if our people then have to pay more to import it themselves. I think we're actually going to take that. It's only a small amount, but it will boost the natural gas industry slightly. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Now, what I also want to do is see if I can boost. I'm going to sell something that we haven't got a surplus of. I'm thinking... Steel is a big one. What do we make a lot of money from? How much milk do we produce? Not a lot of value there. We could sell some of our milk. They purchase it for a lot higher normally. So let's get this up. Let's get this going. We're going to sell... Oh, you don't need milk. Bugger. How about plastics? Excellent. This is a good, ripe opportunity. That's probably all they want to buy because they don't want to be too dependent on one country. 
but we can sell this for, let's go 6,000. No, you want, I see already excellent, good negotiating position. We went for 6,000 last time, let's go for 5,856. Ah, because the volume changed. Fuck me. Let's go volume of sales, plastic. This game is got so many frustrating parts to it, but we're going to get there. We're going to push through. We want to sell it for 6,000. 35, 280 for 6,000. Okay. 35, 280 for 59. Uh, ooh. ooh, ooh, let's go up slightly, let's go five, ah, come on, five, seven, seven, one, that's the best I think we're going to get, it's more than what they normally buy it for, it will boost our plastic industry somewhat. Hmm. Excellent. Now we're going to be careful. I don't want to bump up growth too much, but let's have a look at what we're doing here. How is growth looking? Growth looking is going up slightly. Given a couple more days, that will change as well. Currently, the inflation is still ticking down. It's gone down by another 0.05. And I think that's where we're going to leave it for this episode. We're going to need to continue growing the economy. It's going to be softly, softly, slowly, slowly. Now, there are ways to power game this, but I really want to avoid exploiting things too much in this game. Um, I think that's where we're going to leave it. So take care, guys. And I'll see you next time as we continue pushing Poland, trying to realistically manage this as much as we can.